from somewhere in the skies above us have come from time to time flaming disks and weird aerial phenomena. What are they? Whence have they come? Dr. Morris Avia, one of the leading aerodynamicists in the world, stated that in his opinion, they have originated elsewhere than the Earth and that they are artificially controlled. Yes, they could be craft from another planet or a development of enemy power. But whatever they are, they continue to cause a great deal of concern and controversy. And when we are tempted to say that they are just a fiction writer's dream, we must remember that Jules Verne once dreamed of exploring the ocean depths. And in time, we had the submarine. Leonardo da Vinci also prophesied that someday man would fly like a bird. Today, flying is commonplace. Even the atom bomb thrilled readers of fiction magazines before it became a reality. In fact, the author was so realistic in his description of a terrifying destructive force that he was investigated by the FBI, who thought he had gotten secret information from government laboratories. But now man dreams of limitless power to propel us into outer space, where we can explore other worlds. So... While travel to another planet may seem highly imaginative to us today, in the year 2000, it may be commonplace. Here, for example, is a story of travel in the skies, visits to worlds in outer space, which may well be the blueprint of life to be lived in the years to come. Professor, what is it, buddy? Brooks says we're going to... trying to weather the storm, but it has lost altitude and crashes in the mountains of the polar region. Centuries later, men from a scouting ship discover the wreck. They're in a perfect state of preservation. Must have been frozen since the ship crashed. Body's almost natural temperature. Let's get them out of here. This gas is making me drowsy. Well, uh, take hold of this feet. Wonder how fast we're going. Five thousand miles an hour at least. Border Patrol calling operations office. Border Patrol calling operations office. Operations office. Golly, they sure got in quick. Put this call through the scientist general viewer. It is urgent. One moment. Go ahead. Captain Rankin speaking. We're approaching the city with two prisoners found in a dirigible. A dirigible? That's impossible. Such ships haven't been used since the 20th century. 20th century? What does he mean? I don't know. The ship was frozen on the tip of Bering Glacier. The prisoners were in a state of suspended animation when we found them. Respect, sir. You're to come directly to his headquarters. Thank you, Lieutenant. Come on, then. Come on. Take my place, Lieutenant Deering. Follow our spaceship through the televi. How are you going to be in that dirigible? I was in command. We would taken off from New York and were making a transpolar flight around the world. When but what year was that? 1938. 1938? Impossible. Let me verify that. Nineteen thirty-eight. Uh huh. There was such an expedition. Uh, your name, please. Buck Rogers. Uh, Lieutenant Rogers, officially. And yours, my boy. My name is George Wade. I'm usually called Buddy. Nibano Gas. 
Well, that explains it then. Rankin, we are witnesses to a scientific miracle. By means of a gas discovered by Professor Morgan, these two people have remained in the state of suspended animation for 500 years. 500 years? That, that makes me old enough to be my own great-grandfather. But, Professor Hewer, that's impossible, sir. Dr. Hewer, Killer Kane has captured a number of our pilots. yourself considerable discomfort by telling me where to find the entrance to the hidden city. I do not remember. I think I know a way to make you remember. Look into that instrument. Look into it. Those men were once pilots of Dr. Hewer's ships. Now they are living robots. Men robbed of all willpower while they wear the helmets I had designed for them. Shall I have you measured for a robot's helmet? Or will you tell me where the entrance to the hidden city is? I do not remember. Take him away. I, I, I don't understand, sir. Uh, who is this man called Killer Kane? He is the result of the stupidity of the men of your century. You failed to stamp out lawlessness, and in the end, the criminal became stronger than the law. Racketeers, you call them. Today, they rule the world as cruelly as they ruled their gangs in your day. Well, isn't there any chance of help from an outside source? Well, only from men on some other planet. Another planet? <laughs> that doesn't sound very hopeful. It could be. But our spaceships seem unable to, to slip through Kane's air blockade. We've lost five thus far trying it. You mean you actually have ships that can travel from planet to planet? Of course. But if you have ships that can travel that far... You know, I think I know a way of running that blockade. Well, if you have any plans, I'm willing to listen to them. But to me, it seems much hopeless. Am I right, Marshal Craig? In assuming that you can operate a plane from the ground at such a distance, mind you, by means of radio? That's correct, Rogers. Well then, sir, why don't you send up such a ship as a decoy? While Kane's patrol is following it, I can slip through in a spaceship and get help from Saturn. We've already lost too many ships and crews. We can't afford to try it. It seems to me you can't afford not to try it, sir. Rogers is right, Marshal. Unless we get help from Saturn, our cause is lost. Very well, sir. You're in charge. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Deering, you will go with Rogers to establish a means of communication with Saturn. If you do get through to that planet. calling 60,000 foot patrol. Well, they are close directly for Saturn now, Buck. May as well. Hey, Buck, look. They're tough for it, all right. I did spaceship with no one in it. We can direct all the aircraft from the control room until they reach the outer atmosphere. I don't think we'll run into any more trouble. Why don't you take a nap, Wilma? I'll, I'll take the controls. Thanks very much. That's the outer atmosphere of Saturn, buddy. It's ten times denser than the air around the Earth. What was that? I don't know. Look, two of Killer Kane's ships coming up fast behind us. Retard 
Watch your speed to one half. If we do, they'll get away from us. Don't worry about that. They'll either have to slow down or go up in smoke. We're cutting rockets. If we have that atmosphere at this rate of speed, the friction will burn us to a pit. Oh, the other ship if we're going down. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Deering calling the sign as General of Earth. Lieutenant Deering calling the sign as General of Earth. Air Control Headquarters of the heat. Go ahead, Lieutenant Deering. Give me the sign as General at once, please. Dr. Hewer, are you safe? Our outer atmosphere patrol reported two of Killer Kane's spaceships took off after you. They did. Shot down our ship, but we got away without the gravity belts. Well, if all of Saturn is like this, you can have it. Right. Rex over that way. Tell the men on the other ship to stand guard. Look, I just saw one of Killer Kane's men go behind those rocks. Are you sure? Positive. They must have landed their ship and are following to capture us. Maybe we can beat them at their own game. Follow me. Don't let them guess we know they're trailing us. that gun. Give it to me. There's nothing else you can do, will you? All right, man. Let's get them back to the spaceship. Patton, check the rockets on the other ship. Do not move. Any of you. Drop your weapons. You are from the Earth, are you not? Why, yes, we came here to make a treaty. It would be useless to explain to me. I am only a soldier acting under order. Two of you stay and guard the ship. The other two bring the others after me. In, sir. I am Alda, director of the Council of the Wise. 
I have had you brought here to explain your presence on Saturn. You may speak. We came here as envoys. Seeking an alliance with you people of Saturn. And why do you desire such an alliance? To escape the journey of a man called Killer Cain, who's imposed his rule on all but a handful of us. A man who governs by brute force. That's not true. The leader Cain is a just man. He rules with the consent of all save a few revolutionaries. Revolutionaries? Is it true that you are revolutionaries? Ah, in a sense, I suppose we are. If it's revolutionary to protest against brutality. I have had enough. Rebels or not, I see threw them all into prison. Saturn wants no contact with outside planets. But in this age of science, we cannot hope to isolate ourselves from the rest of the universe. But we are dedicated to peace and have no patience with rebels. Then why not form an alliance with our government and help us stamp out this rebellion? The point is well made. We'll imprison the revolutionaries and treat with the envoys of the leader Cain. Then I jump tail and run for the sliding panel. But we can't escape the guards. We'll have to try. Throw the others in prison. One wrong move from any of you. You'll need a new castle of the wise. Seize him! Ships are over there. What about those awful Zug guards? Take care of them with this gun. Take the controls, Buck. I'll find the starting rocket. Right. Dog down the door, buddy. See if all the portholes are closed. Earth. Yeah, that's right where you're going, buddy. Wilma and Rogers must prevail on the Saturnians to lend them a spaceship to return to Earth. That's no Saturnian craft, Doctor. It's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. Impossible. I know that type of ship too well to be mistaken. Have you tried to contact them on our wavelength? As a matter of fact, I have. Oh, we must do so at once. There's a spaceship at 274.6. Contact at once on our wavelength. Yes, sir. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. Guys, Buck, I guess we'll be landing pretty soon, won't we? That's right. The radio was working so we could contact Dr. Hugh. Well, that isn't necessary. I know the secret entrance to the hidden city. We'd better start using our retarding pressure. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. I'm sorry, sir. There's no contact. That proves it, Doctor. It is a cane ship. But I can't understand. There's only one answer, Doctor. Boomer and Rogers must have betrayed the secret entrance to the city. There's the signal to open the gates. What shall I do, sir? Open them and stand by to close them at my command. Yes, sir. They got our signal. They're in the lock now, sir. Close the gates, Mom. And put all the power of the dynamo behind me. You're going to jam! Ship to the airdrome. Have it lowered with trains. I want to examine. Yes, sir. Hey. 
Buddy, get that gravity belt. We still have a chance. Quick, quick, through that opening. How did you get here? The air marshal ordered me to arrest anyone who escaped from the wrecked ship, sir. You mean you were in that spaceship? Yes, sir. But it's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. That's why I ordered it destroyed. The only way we could escape from Saturn, sir, after the men of that planet turned against us. We'd better discuss this in my office. Report back to the officer of the day, Lieutenant. Oh. That also is true, sir. It is the duty of every honest government to aid in the suppression of anarchy wherever found. To that end, we have signed this promise of support. Then, Stalin, you will visit the Earth with Captain Lasker. Verify his story. If it is true, you will present this treaty to the leader Kane for his signature. Saturn will abide by your decision. spaceship be ready to leave, Captain. It is ready now, and I suggest we start at once. I thank you in our leader's name for your faith in us, for your promised help. This is Prince Talon, Lieutenant Patton. We're leaving for Earth immediately. Did everything work out as you hoped? I think our troubles with Dr. Hsu are about over. Have you identified the ship, Hewer? Beyond question, it's a killer cane ship. May I look, sir? Oh, why, of course. Uh, it's a sister ship to the one we came back from Saturn in. Then that means that Killer Kane's men have probably completed their mission on Saturn. If we only knew if they made the alliance with the Saturnians. Well, haven't we got any spies working with the Killer Kane people? Well, we've tried it. But every one of them has been captured and put into Kane's robot battalion. So what was done with this stuff taken from the wrecked spaceship? Dr. Hewer has the instruments. The rest of the equipment was put in military storage. Then you still have the uniforms taken from the crew's quarters? Are you suggesting that we use those uniforms to get a spy into Killer Kane's camp? Yes, sir. I'd like to volunteer for the detail. Oh, you'd only be captured and spend the rest of your days in Kane's robot battalion. I'm afraid that you're of more value to us in the air, Roger. But, Marshal Craig, if I can get the information concerning the Saturnian Treaty, sir, may mean the success of our campaign. He's right, Hewer. You haven't a chance in a thousand. But if you're willing to risk it, I can't afford to refuse the offer. Thank you very much, sir. Which one of those buildings is Killer Kane's? That big one, the terraces. I'll circle it in a minute. Switch it to gravity belts and prepare to bail out. Right on. So long, Lincoln. Good luck, Lieutenant. I sent for you because my patience is about at an end. You have all read the treaty which our good friend Prince Talon has brought from our sister planet Saturn. It pleases me. Buddy, get it to grab the belt from the wreck we just passed. Are there any objections from the councils? Then I submit it to you for your signatures. No one will sign that treaty, Kane. I'll take it. Cards! How did you get in here? We were here when you and Prince Talon entered the room. It's Buck Rogers. Who is Buck Rogers? He's the hidden city American who came to Saturn. Talon, 
You're not going to sign this treaty until I've had a chance to show you just why this man is called Killer Kane. Don't be a fool, Rogers. If you persist in this folly, my men will kill you. Not until I've shown Prince Talon just what you do with your prisoners, Kane. Get to the televi. Go on, move. Prince Talon, you go with me. Buddy, keep these counselors covered. Get the dynamo rooms. I said the dynamo room, Kane. See for yourself, Prince Helen. Those steel caps they're wearing are amnesia helmets, an invention of Kane's scientists to rob men of their minds and their will. This is incredible. Nevertheless, Talon, it's true. Now do you know why we are fighting this man? Who is your leader? I shall be glad to treat with him. That's a very handsome gesture, Prince Talon. But how do you and Rogers plan to leave my city? You will be arrested by my guards before you can leave the palace. I've taken care of that, King. Buddy, toss me that to gravity belt. Gravity belt? I don't understand. It's a device we use here on Earth. It's really an outgrowth of the old parachute. Put it on, Teller. Oh, I see. Buddy. Out the window you go, you two. Well, how about you, Buck? Never mind about me. Stand here and do nothing. Maybe if we. Lieutenant Derry, you forget where you are. Now, it's possible that Rogers has escaped. He may be somewhere in the open country between here and Kane City. I suggest we send out a scout patrol to look for him. Do so at once, Clagg. Lieutenant Derry. Yes, sir. You're a member of the 7th Pursuit, aren't you? Yes, sir. Order out the squadron. Cover all of the open country between here and Kane City. Flying at a low altitude. I'll have your complete flying order sent to the airport. That is all. Yes, sir. Find Doc Rogers if anybody can. Speak to the leader. Calling the leader. Calling the leader. Calling the leader. This is the leader. What have you to report? The fugitives have escaped in your patrol ship, sir. Escaped? In my ship? You blockheads? I'll send every one of you to the robot battalion. Report to the guard captain under arrest. Yes, sir. The leader's airport. The spies have escaped in my private patrol ship. Send the squadron after them and shoot them down. Warn all outposts. If they break through to the open country, we'll never get them. And 
you are the men I made counselors of Earth. I would be better served by this Buck Rogers, who walked through your men as if they were children. I noticed you didn't capture Rogers when he was in this very room. Cranko, I warn you. Another statement like that and you will go before the firing squad. And so will all of you if you fail me again. Now get out! To your hidden city, Colonel Rogers. Uh, about 600 miles. I wouldn't call old Dr. Hugh exactly handsome, but she sure would give a lot to see his face right now. <laughs> I bet you would, buddy. Tell him I should have returned this treaty to you after I took it from Killer King. I'd forgotten about it in the excitement. Someday you must return to the planet Saturn with me and receive a thanks from people for preventing the alliance with Kane. I'd rather you thank me by giving us your planet support. And smashing Killer Kane's armies. Hey, Buck, here comes a whole squadron at us. Is it a Kane squadron? No. No, it's one of our own from the hidden city. Calling Lieutenant Deering. This is Lieutenant Deering. Go ahead, please. It's a Killer Kane ship approaching beneath us about 6,000. Pull out a formation and bring it down before they can communicate with headquarters. Yes, sir. Hey, Buck, one of them's diving at us. I can't un... Yes, I can. This is Killer Kane's ship. They think we're an enemy. Just below it. Fire a blast into the tail service as I level out. They're going to shoot us down. The only thing we can do is set down and let them see who we are. I ever saw Killer Kane's ship give up so easily. Uh, that makes it unanimous, Wilma. Who is this? One of Killer Kane's men? I know. He's the best friend we have, right? It's Prince Tala, envoy from the planet Saturn. He's going to help us in our fight against Killer Kane. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I didn't understand. Well, that's an old custom we have here. It's a sign of friendship, like this, Tala. That's right. Wilma, report back to your squadron. Advise your commander what happened. Tell him we'll follow you back to the hidden city and gain ship. Oh, I think I will. Good. He's been taken care of, sir. Dr. Hewer, this is Prince Talon, envoy from the planet Saturn. Dr. Hewer is our scientist general. And Air Marshal Craig, our operations chief. Prince Talon? Prince Talon, you bring new hope to a beleaguered race. If it had not been for Colonel Rogers, I think your enemy would have tricked me into fighting him instead of helping me. I'm authorized to sign this treaty, pledging our support to your cause. It would be more honest to let see our people and decide whether we are worthy of your help. Lieutenant Deering, it will be well to contact the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. Advisor, we have signed a treaty with Prince Talon, but they are at war with Killer Kane. Yes, sir. The Earth calling planet Saturn. The Earth calling planet Saturn. I assure the leader that the hidden city squadron was upon us before we could bomb Rogers and Talon again. So you allowed Rogers to escape with Talon to the hidden city? We could not help ourselves. You see, we were silenced. If Talon pledges the aid of Saturn to Dr. Hewer, they will drive us from the face of the earth. We brought it on ourselves. You should have taken my advice. Quick, when we had it on. Since you are so clever, you shall take a spaceship to Saturn. 
and arrange a treaty with her people before Talon has time to report back. I refuse. I will not be a tool for your insane ambitions. I am in command here, Krenko. Take him away to the robot battalion where he can forget his grievances. You can't send me there, Kane. You can't. I'll head your commission to Saturn. I'll head your commission to Saturn. But don't send me to Robert Kane. No. Anything to say, say it now, Krenko. When this helmet is in place, you'll never think nor speak again. You can tell Kane that I'll escape. I'll live to see the day that his... One more dead mine in the ranks of the leader's enemies. I trust no others share the feelings of the late Counselor Krenko. Being a kindly ruler, I shall give you a chance to redeem yourself. Thank you, sir. Fly a spaceship to Saturn and arrange the treaty that Krenko refused to try. If you succeed, there is an empty chair at my council table. The Earth calling the planet Saturn. I'm afraid it's useless, Doctor. Apparently, our receiving sets are not in tune with your projectors. In that event, you'll have to return to Saturn by spaceship. I doubt whether such a trip is possible. Air controls. Book reports from our outer atmosphere observatory. Report just received, sir. Killer Kane has doubled all air patrols in that stratum. A spaceship wouldn't have a chance. I am not quite so sure about that, Craig. Not sure? You know what's happened to all our ships to try to break through. Yes, but I've been working on a little experiment that may help us. What kind of an experiment? Well, I didn't mean to show it until I had perfected it, but uh, even as it is, it may serve our purpose. Just step over to this window. Now watch the ship near us. Stand well back. I don't want to experiment on you. Do you know anything about this? I knew he was working on something, but he wouldn't say what it was. Now keep an eye on that ship. I don't say anything strange about it. What's it supposed to do, Doctor? Blow up or something? Why, it's disappearing in the thin air. Oh, don't get in the ray. It might do the same thing to you. It wouldn't harm you very much, but it may take some time to bring you back to visibility. But I don't see how that'll help, sir. If you've destroyed the ship... Oh, but I haven't. The ship is still there, but you can't see it. I have discovered a ray which reduces all opaque matter to transparency, perfect as the ether itself. Unfortunately, I can hold it only for a matter of a few minutes. Ten at most. And the ray won't harm anybody inside the ship? Not at all. Well, then the problem's solved. And the sooner we start, the better. Yes. They'll need a navigator, said. Oh, yes, so they will. You will report to the air control room and make ready for immediate flight. Yes, sir. Well, if I have to take you with me, we'll get to the control room. Doctor? Have the rockets loaded into a spaceship for immediate takeoff. Yes, sir. Rocket laboratory. This is the air control office. Have spaceship LZ-9 loaded immediately for takeoff. These are retarding rockets. Make sure you put them in the lower racks with the firing end forward. You'll be pretty much on your own when you reach Saturn. get through Kane's blockade. All depends on Dr. Hewitt, Helen. I'll radio him as soon as we spot any of the Kane's ships. Buck, there they are, right above us. Dr. 
Dr. Ewer. Dr. Ewer. Buck Rogers calling. This is Dr. Ewer. Go ahead, Buck. We spotted the Kane ship, sir. They're directly above us. Better start your dissolvo ray. I'll turn it on immediately, Buck. A hidden city ship rising, sir. Trying to run up blockade. Head straight for it. Man the ray guns. Hold your fire and I'll give the order. It's working perfectly, Doctor. Look. It's disappearing into thin air. It's vanished. Attention all patrol ships. The hidden city spaceship has just run our blockade. Spread out. Circle and try to locate it. All right, Tom? Yes. You, Wilma? Fine, Doc. Stand by your rocket controls. We are back to normal again. <laughs> With better relief. A strange sensation being up here in a ship we couldn't see. Now, the main thing is we got through Killer Kane's blockade. Now the only thing left between us and Saturn is <laughs> space. Well, we made it. We're over Saturn again. Now, sir, Lieutenant Deering and I must return to the Earth immediately. So I realize the need for your haste. I will see you to your spaceship. Thank you, Teller. Goodbye, sir. Saturn calling a scientist general on Earth. Air control room calling the scientist general. Air control room calling the scientist general. Doctor Ewer, it's Buck Rogers. Yes, Buck. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. Wilma and I are taking off immediately, sir, but before we do, we wanted to check with you about the dissolvo ray. It's still imperfect. But we can count on it to make you invisible long enough to slip through Kay's air blockade. That's fine, Doctor. Then as soon as we near the Earth, we'll advise you. As long as Doctor here is ready for you, there is nothing to keep you here any longer. No, Talon. We'll get in touch with you on the space radio as soon as we decide the best way to rid the Earth of Killer Kane and his outlaw army. The best of luck to you. Thank you, Talon. Try the starting rocket, Wilma. to check over the dissolver ray apparatus and once and bring it here. Colonel Rogers is on his way back from Stanton and we need to bring him through the blockade. Yes, sir. Preparing another expedition to force the Saturnians to sign a treaty with us. This time I shall.
This is the leader. Sir, an unidentified spaceship has been reported returning from Saturn. Notify the commander of the Outer Atmosphere Patrol and keep me closely informed. Observers report an unidentified spaceship returning from Saturn. Perhaps Laska has been successful after all. We'll make no move until we learn more. Adjourn. Patrol 62, calling Patrol 62. This is Patrol 62. This is Commander White. Take your patrol to the 120,000 foot level. Watch for a spaceship returning from Saturn. If it is an enemy craft, bring it down. Yes, sir. 120,000 foot level. Yes, sir. Roman, got to give me a few retarding rockets. Soon be in the outer atmosphere. All right. Dr. Ewer. Dr. Ewer. We're approaching the 160,000 foot level, sir. Stand by with your dissolvo ray. We're all set, Buck. Just give the word. Buck, there's a Kane patrol squadron coming up fast beneath us. Dr. Hewer, give us a ray now, sir. One of Keane's patrol squadrons has spotted us. There she is. Squadron 62, spaceship sighted. Fly above it and use attack formation 9. Happy fog at this level. That ship seems to be disappearing. It's working perfectly, Craig. Certainly. Engine, you oh, Lacey, check the machinery on this ship. The Air Marshal want all the information he can get on. Yes, sir. about the Saturnian Treaty? By all means, Colonel. The rule is that the planet Saturn are with us in our fight against Killer Kane, sir. They're going to send spaceships as soon as we're ready to attack. With this support, we cannot lose. We must call a meeting of the War Council at once. Yes. I'll take over now. Uh, you're early. A little. I was anxious to find out what's been happening. Well, the war minister's been in there with Craig since 9 o'clock. Something's up. Yeah. Oh, good night. Good night. Calling the leader. 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 Cal
calling the leader. This is the leader, Kane. Sir, this is Carson of your private patrol ship. I'm on the hidden city air control room. Hidden city? Do you know where the secret entrance is? Yes, sir. It's in the Valley 100 on our maps. The gates are open now. I'll notify the outer atmosphere patrol at once. This is Commander White, sir. The secret entrance to the hidden city is in Valley 100. The gates are open. Proceed there with your squadron and destroy the city. It shall be done, sir. Contact. All ships. Attention, all ships. Objective Valley 100 at full throttle. Well, gentlemen, we'll see you in the morning. Good night, Marshal. Good night, Good night, You know, Marshal Craig, I still believe that every day we delay our attack on Killer Kane is a day lost. I'm inclined to agree with you, Colonel. We'll discuss it again at the War Council tomorrow. Yes, sir. Excuse me a moment. Any messages for me? No, sir. Where's the other operator? I don't know, sir. He left a few minutes ago. Well, he'll go back to straight duty for this. The fools left the gates open. Don't touch that switch. King Spy. That's right. I'm brought here by Colonel Rogers himself. Oh, so you stowed away in that patrol ship, did you? I should have had sense enough to search it. You won't have to worry long about that, Colonel. There's a full squadron of the leader's planes on the way here now. That squadron will be here any minute now. Uh, the airport guards will blast them to pieces before they land. I think you're mistaken. <laughs> chances to attack Killer Kane immediately. He now knows the secret entrance to our city, and every hour we delay weakens our chances. I suggest, sir, that we contact our allies on Saturn immediately and ask their support. I said you might wait for Colonel Rogers, but no listening. Then it is the unanimous vote of this war council that we communicate with Saturn immediately, ask their promised support, and attack Kane's stronghold at once. We stand adjourned. Voice my sentiments exactly. We radio Saturn from my laboratory. Yes, sir. Hey, Bud, can I come along? No, of course you can, old Tammy. Doctor, is it to be war? Yes, we must communicate with Saturn at once. But how can we hope to defeat Kane with so vast a force at his disposal? With Saturn's help, Wilma, we stand better than an even chance. Is the equipment in order? Yes, sir. 
It was checked only this morning. This is a catastrophe. The receiving set you left off Saturn is dead. We can't communicate with it. Maybe it's only turned off, sir. The set is dead. If there were any life at all, that lamp would flicker. We said it burning steadily. We've got to get into communication with them. There's nothing I can do, Marshal. I've made two trips there already, sir. Looks like I'm going to have to make a third. You wouldn't stand a chance. After last night, the outer atmosphere will be swarming with Kane patrol ships. You couldn't make it in one of our ships. But I don't mean to take one of our own ships, sir. I'm going to take one of the captured Kane patrol ships. Patrol ship? They're not built for space journeys. I'm sorry, sir. I hadn't thought of that. I can fix that. I can have my technicians install extra rocket racks. You won't have a comfortable journey, but you'll get there. Start in the work, sir. I'll be ready to take off as soon as the ship is in order. But, Buck, you don't mean to go alone. I'm afraid so, Wilma. I daren't take a single defender from the city. But you're armed. Ah, the arm's all right. Now, don't you worry about it. See you before I go. So long, buddy. Oh, I'll be seeing you, Buck. All set, boys? Uh, I guess it's about time to take off. I wish I'd seen Buddy. He's probably very busy at something or other. Yes, sir. Now, Wilma, I'm sorry you're not making this trip. So am I, Buck. We'll be expecting you back soon. Dr. Hewer, I'll keep in constant communication with you, sir. Good. Goodbye. 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 Ship ZN-1 en route to headquarters with urgent information. Squadron commander calling all patrol ships. General orders. ZN-1 is an extra detail en route to Leader Kane's headquarters. Okay, buddy. You can come out anytime you want now. How did you know I was in there? Well, when you're trying to hide out from somebody, be careful when you peek around corners. Oh, I get it. You saw me in the observation here. Yeah, that's right. Say, Bucky, you're not really going to Kane's headquarters, are you? Yeah, I'll say we're not. Hey, buddy, you take the controls and keep her as she is. We're headed for the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. <laughs> Aldar, you will not save Prince Talon by accepting Kane's terms. Once he's here on Saturn, he will kill your prince and enslave your people. Gentlemen, you're dealing with the vilest type of crime known to man. Kidnapping. Why, we've fought it on Earth for centuries. Men capable of such a crime are without honor. Their words are worthless. And Killer Kane is the foulest of the lot. Why, your own experience with him should tell you that I speak the truth. Surely you must see that a treaty with Killer Kane will result only in your prince's death and the subjugation of your people. May I, who first suggested surrender, 
Now withdraw my plea. Let us abide by our treaty with the people of the hidden city and fight Killer Cain. And you? I too cast my vote for war. Talk with Rogers. Send the plane out at once, Greg. Air control. Air control. All planes assigned to battle plan B take off immediately. Captain Rankin. All planes assigned to battle plan B are to take off immediately. All planes assigned to battle plan B take off immediately. <laughs> single ship on Kane's private airfield. sent up here. Krinko? That's right. Go on. Hey, Rothbard! Send Krinko up there. Krinko. Balcony. Move! Yes, I'm all right. Now listen. Listen. We've come here to free the robots and turn them against Cain. Put this back on again. It's harmless now. Then go down and remove the helmets from the others. You got that? That'll be a real pleasure. Fine. <laughs> Himself. Now, Crinkle, lead the way. Go on, bud. 
Now that we know the secret entrance to the hidden city, we must destroy it immediately. I will send all air squadrons against it tomorrow. All right. You will command the infantry that will follow in after the air attack. Yes, sir. Calling the leader Kane. Calling the leader Kane. Calling the leader Kane. We've been attacked by hidden city planes and fours. I've already lost a third of my ships. Commander White. Commander White. There's no time to lose. We must attack hidden city immediately. It means that you're through, King. Ready. Rico, hold him. No! No! And that, my friends, finishes the story of Killer Kane, the man who wanted to conquer the world. No less ruthless, no less cunning, no less a danger to civilization than the very real enemy that threatens the world today. Let us hope that the scientists of the free world will devise the weapons and the craft that will make democracy invincible against any enemy. God bless America.